First thing to talk about, this was crazy news that I saw this morning. Adam Newman, those who don't know, he is the co-founder and was the CEO of WeWork. Uh, WeWork at one point was valued at $47 billion after the chairman of SoftBank gave Adam Newman $4 billion reportedly in about 20 minutes of a meeting. And this is a guy who's known to make big, big bets on big, big visions. Adam Newman convinced him on the vision, gave him $4 billion, valued the company at $47 billion. And then Newman kind of blew up the $4 billion, did a lot of unethical things with the money, private jets, all this stuff, and the company went to crap. Uh, today, he got another $350 million for another real estate play. This is now We Live versus We Work, a uh, famous venture capital firm. Uh, Andreessen Horowitz funded the, the company before it's launched. It has a, a, a close to a billion dollar valuation, uh, getting $350 million in venture funding. Sean, when you found out about this in the morning and you had time to digest the news, uh, what were your raw thoughts on this? Well, wait, there's more. So what everyone forgets, because because for whatever reason, these stories didn't make it big. Back in March, Adam no Nauman just raised $70 million yeah. from Andreessen for a Web3 token for climate. Yes. So flow carbon. Flow carbon. So it's like not only are we talking about $350 million for residential real estate. I don't know if you've heard of that before. A few people do own houses. <laughs> And there's about, and everyone and their mother has rental properties. I, uh, uh, let me go slow because I'm so pissed off about what this news. And I'll tell you why. Although I totally understand the mindset of what happened. I think any founder out there, yourself included, should really look at this and say like, now, wait a minute, what's really going on here? So I saw the news this morning. Um, it wasn't so much the news that he raised 350 million on top of the 70 he just raised for yet another project. It's the fact that, like him or hate him, he is a great visionary builder. Fine. Stop right there. That's Put a period at the end of that sentence and things would be fine. But to your point, the issue with WeWork was that the minute people stopped babysitting him, it was opening up daycare centers and, and random offline projects and buying tech companies, buying education companies. And it was- Licensing it, it, the trademark we to we, yourself yes. for $6 million. Yeah, it's the, like- the problem is, is to say things like he's a visionary leader and we're investing in the person, not the company. That would be fine if it was believable that that's the case. What he proved was it was his leadership style and inability to focus on solving for the problem that ultimately did all the damage at WeWork. They were not protected for downside risk. They had basically blown through tons of capital with no actual ability to turn a profit on any of it, by the way. And when I look at this and I think to myself, Let's put all of that aside, which is already enough to say, like, I would never give this guy a nickel. The other piece of it as well is there there is, let's be clear, not financial advice. And also, don't quote me, bro. But there are a number of sources who have come out and said the culture was disgusting and toxic. Um, sexist, very sexism was rampant throughout the organization. There were all kinds of claims made against a number of people internally. And it sort of just speaks to the fact that the VC industry, which already has a number of issues in the first place. There's all there's tons of folks focusing on why um, minority-led startups are getting no funding. Women-led startups get nothing. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. They get nothing. The Cloud 100, I heard only, I might be off by one or two here, but I think only five female CEOs in the entire Cloud 100. Yep. yep. And, and for those who don't know, that's really venture-backed Cloud 100, not major companies. But like, that's a huge, it's a huge known problem in the industry. And what the industry did by doing this was say, we don't give a crap. We don't care how bad this dude was, how much damage he did, how many employees lost their their financial future on options that were worth nothing walking away from other jobs. All that to say, eh, let's just invest this guy who seemingly can't control himself, the people around him or the company underneath him. So the whole rhetoric of $350 million for the founder because of his vision, last I checked, his vision was getting hammered drunk in the office um now i have no problem with drinking i have no problem with him smoking whatever i don't care but but in his role well in in charge and so there has to be a point where you're raising a billion dollar valuation to rent let me just like let's just double check real quick since there's basically no information out here just so i'm clear we're going to rent houses to people who want to live in them and maybe offer some amenities it's like is that not well, so, so the visionary idea here sean was yeah. that uh, co-working was never a thing and we work made it a thing co-living and uh, Adam Newman grew up in the communes of Israel co-living is this is this idea that hasn't really become mainstream and if you could actually know your neighbor and have these bonds with them that could be a major opportunity in the future 
Sure. I think what you just described is a college dorm room. Um, I'm not sure if you heard of those before. They they do exist and, and they have quads where people have spaces where they can get to meet the people around them. It's like, I get it. You're making dorms for adults in theory. The pr- The problem is this is this is going to do two things that is insanely negative for middle and lower class folks out there, which is the vast majority of everyone who's already struggling in the first place. He's going to have to somehow now provide even more housing that is going to have to somehow turn a profit while delivering all those services, which means what? Really high rent. Yep. And really high rent, as we've already learned we work, came back to bite them in the rear end. Yep. So guess who lets guess who gets left behind? The people who are trying to make a living and put a roof over the head of their family. And you know me, man, I am not at all anti making money. I love real estate. I own rentals. I keep my rents the lowest in the area. I never have vacancies ever. And I mean in almost a decade, I've never had a vacancy for more than a month because we keep our rents low. We provide really good, really clean units. Um, and, and the reason I'm saying that is just to give some perspective that it's very different to rent commercial space versus residential space. The yeah. rules are different. The regulations are different. You know, there's a lot more cost than people would imagine that goes into residential, especially in a lot of the areas they're saying they want to look at. On top of that, they're not just competing with let me even back up a bit in the commercial space where we work it made sense for everybody in the beginning because i'm a huge landlord and i own office buildings well look you want to grab a couple of floors and pay me a premium sure i don't care rent it to whoever you want afterwards as long as you pay me the difference here is you need to really know who your neighbors are because you're living with them and it's going to be one of those things where it's like well, who's this designed for is it really designed for a younger crowd who's not going to have the income to afford to live there well that pushes all the families out so the other problem is we already know that hedge funds, PE firms, VCs, all of the major asset providers, the Black Rocks and Black Stones of the world, they're all buying up all the residential real estate and flipping that into private companies and public yep. as well, which again, it's a great business model. Real estate's been around forever, but we've got the Airbnbs of the world. We've got the rentals of the world. We've got the short-term rentals. We've got the, the we lives. At some point, like this has hit just, there has to be a point in time when someone says, are there literally so many people who want to share? I mean, by the way, can't we just rent rooms out anyways to anyone we want yes. in our own homes? Yes. I guess I guess what I'm failing to see here is the issue. Now, on WeWork, to go back in time, for anyone who has not read, I've rented commercial space for businesses in the past. It is a pain in the rear end sometimes. And it is nice to have flexibility in the model. Totally. And that's why companies existed before WeWork. They just were led by a guy who was so charismatic he was able to bring massive attention to the marketplace. But as we found out that char- that that charisma came with a lot of really negative things for the people who were in and around it. I just cannot understand for the life of me how you yourself, a startup founder, can have meeting after meeting after meeting with VCs. And they're like, mm, I'm not sure if a platform that people would love to use offers huge value right off the bat. I'm speaking as an angel investor here. Your Your platform makes sense to me. There is, there is a massive amount of people who are looking for new content to listen to because if they weren't, Spotify wouldn't be around, YouTube wouldn't be around, TikTok wouldn't be around. So yeah, you have to find your win in there. That's on you as the founder to do that. The problem here is I don't know anyone across anywhere that I travel, which is a pretty regular basis, who's saying, boy, you know what I really wish I had? A dorm room back again. Or a roommate, especially oh, when you're in your yeah. mid-20s. Like, don't you yeah. value your privacy more when you get older? Like, Well, the, the problem here is now you're talking about a roommate that you don't even get to pick. You're being told who your roommate is. So, you know, let's just get, let's just, let's just like suss this out a tiny bit more. I move into a We Live. I know that's not going to be the name of the company, but I move into a We Live and I hate the dude sitting, you know, in the bedroom across from mine. What's my recourse? Do I have a contract? Can I just easily pick up and leave? What if I'm the problem? What if I'm miserable to live with? Right. You know, residential has a lot of different rules as far as the way you can treat people, what kind of people you can allow to come in. You can look at a business and say, look, I'm not renting to you. You have no, no way of making money. A person comes in and all they have to say is like, I was discriminated against for any of these hundred reasons. And now they're going to have to deal with that. And there's going to be lawsuits and quick cases on that. And I think also the other problem is residential real estate, for those who don't know, and again, He'll prove me wrong, I'm sure, because they're going to keep throwing money at this guy. But as someone who's in the residential real estate space, I can tell you the margins are razor thin. You get into real estate because you're looking for, you know, internal rates of returns, cash on cash returns, et cetera. If I can get a 10 to 12% yield, I'm actually really, that's typically where we are, but we work very hard to do that. And we've set up a very strong system over 
over a long time, by the way, and we paid cash for everything in the beginning. So there was no debt. There was no overhead. It was purely speculating on what we can improve from an operational margin perspective. This is yet another example of throwing a ton of money at this guy to go willy nilly buy whatever he needs to do to make this happen. And I don't know. I think it's a real scary thing when the rest of the world is seeing VC slow down and they keep throwing it at this dude who has already proven he can't actually effectively manage um, in the way that they need to be managed. And again, I think the bigger problem is who's going to be in charge? Because I don't believe it's going to be Adam. So, 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 so a couple things. So number one, you're correct on the razor thin margins. My dad has owned a a rental property for the past 15 years. He makes about 10 grand from it that he splits with his brother because they both bought it. But he's keeping that for the long term because he knows that asset when he retires is going to be worth triple. He paid for it in 2008. Um, so that's, you know, that's one of his things that he's counting on for retirement. Number two, I want to read a couple of things from the, uh, the press release, um, For many of these people, ambitious people, increased screen time and reduced in-person interaction will cause challenges that are not just limited to work, such as alienation and loneliness. This is not a good path for anyone, and we need to solve it. Without this, apartments don't generate any bond between people and places. Without community, no bond between person to person. Um, And Adam is a visionary leader who revolutionized the second largest asset class in the world, commercial real estate, by bringing community and brand to an industry which neither existed before. So so I have a question for you, especially as an investor and someone who takes bets on founders and stuff like that. Here sure. was here was my thinking today after I kind of digested it. Is Andreessen Horowitz, that is the biggest venture capital firm in the world, taking an extremely contrarian bet that a guy who, yes, blew up $47 billion to $4 billion, still got it to the point, which 99.9% of people can't do, to, to get it to the $47 billion. Like, he got it there. Then he screwed up. Are they taking a bet that, there are so few, I mean, so few people that can actually convince the world of an idea to get it to that value that will give them another shot. 350, if they lose it, it's really not that much for them. But if they win on the upside, because he's the guy, I mean, they're betting on him. There's not even a product that can take it to the promised land, that it is a contrary thing to do. And it's good because no VC would do it except them, which is why you typically want to make the investment. I think that what it actually says is if you are out of control, don't do the right things, mismanage money, people, and have people mistreated under your nose, you're a good founder. That's what I think it actually says. Because Mm -hmm. nothing about the articles or the stories that have been written speak to any kind of truth of reality whatsoever. They all say the same thing. This is his first venture since we work. Well, that's not true. He already had full carbon. Then they say the other problem is they haven't even created an operationalized model yet, but have already given it a billion dollar valuation. We're right back to 1999-2000 where I might as well have a little sock puppet that's selling dog food with no ability to ever actually put it in front of your door. And I think that there is a very big difference between taking a chance on, on, a you know, on a bill on, I don't want to say Bill Gates, because that's a whole different industry from a different day and time. But like when you go back to 99, 2000 and you look at Bezos and the way he was able to scale from working above a a takeout Chinese restaurant and and really start with books and being on his hands and knees, packaging up his own stuff. People can hate them all they want now. The real story of his past is not the story that you read about today. They were very small and they were nimble and they had to do it in their own way. And sure, he was connected and sure he had some help. But it speaks to the fact that this guy made a decision based on real math and a real operating model to go out and build something and relentlessly fought through everything. Valuation that went to nothing, the crash of 01, the, the, the crash of 08, right? Like that is someone that you bet on because that's a founder that will never quit. You look at a guy like, I, I mean, I can think of a ton. I mean, and there's, there's tons of female founders who are in the same place too. Like th- there are so many good examples of these amazing, strong people who took care of their customers. They took care of their people and their staff and their culture. And they took care of their investors. To say that this guy and i don't have a problem with the guy i don't know him i bet he's probably a super great guy so i want to be clear this isn't some assassination of his personality or person what it is though is it's setting a real example that hey if you do the right things and you work hard and you have a vision you have a moonshot i'm a big moonshot guy we've talked about this before i'm a moonshot guy this isn't a moonshot this is just restructuring rentals into rental rooms I mean, like, like next, he's going to come out and just be like, I have this great idea. It's called a hotel, but with an M on the front. You're like, yeah, dude, it's a motel. There's lots of those already. I mean, couldn't I just go and Airbnb buy a hotel? was the moonshot and that was an actual idea that was fundamentally Correct. different. This has no idea at all. There's, there's, so it's, it's literally a $350 million bet on the founder. And I think that goes to your point where it 
fuels the toxicity of the venture capital landscape. Well, here's the here's the one last thing I'll say about it is part of what Andreessen came out and said was much of what you heard about Adam and WeWork was fictionalized and exaggerated. Whoa. I mean, pump the brakes, dude. When that S1 came out, yeah. people were like, wait a minute, this accounting is wrong. This is this is negative numbers. I mean, to, to make to make some of these statements. And again, speculation. I don't know. I didn't talk to them personally, but every article seems to be saying the same thing. It's based on him and how great he was for WeWork. Um, which ask ask um ask us SoftBank how they're still feeling about that one, you know. But hey, I mean, for whatever reason, this is the direction they want to go in. So you know, I, I guess I guess the better question is, have you gone to Andreessen Horowitz to raise three hundred fifty million dollars for Audio? Because apparently, you're twice as nice of a guy, and your idea is actually one that's already working and operationalized. So I mean, you should be able to raise seven hundred at a three billion dollar valuation. That's what I'm seeing. It's quite insane to me. It's like at, at some level, like charisma can only go so far, right? You know, you know who has charisma? Clowns at the circus. They make kids laugh. It's great. There's actors and actresses who have great charisma. There's people who can go on stage and have excellent charisma. Those people don't raise three hundred fifty dollars because they might have had a brain fart one day that turned into a a name on a piece of paper. Yeah. Um, and I think it just it just really speaks to the it speaks to to an industry that's trying so hard to lose the, to lose the frat boy um, F everybody. If you don't are, if you're not in, you're never in. You're not and in, this you're not literally in. just proved the point that if you're not in, you are out and you are way out. Cause man, I'll tell you as someone who's done it and I've been there too, raising money is difficult. It is not impossible. It is definitely doable. You've done it. I've done it, but it's difficult. And the reason it's difficult is because even with the most well thought out idea, with every penny accounted for the vision over 10 years, you do, you do full blown analysis up the wazoo. It's still, you're going to hear things like, yeah, I don't know. It's a pretty big risk. Maybe I'll throw you 50 grand. And you know, we're like, I have an actual operating real estate company. Um, it's, it's called an REOC, a real estate operating company. Um, it is debt free. It is extremely profitable. But if I want to go and raise capital for that, no VC would fund me. I would have to go to a bank, give my my left arm and sign one of my kids away to get a loan because that's the, the market's so tough right now. So to think like, I guess the other the other big question here is for the record, they're only investing for an IPO. Let's let's yes, again, it's 100%. easy for someone to come. Yeah, it's easy for someone who's watching this to be like, well, you don't know. And you're right. I don't know. They're clearly not investing for a 12% margin on rental property. Okay. And let's say because he gets it somehow higher price because he offers scrambled eggs in the morning which sounds the more i talk about this the more i'm like isn't this just a hotel where people continental live? breakfast yeah. exactly right like some donuts and muffins i mean this is clearly just their way of trying to get this a lot of excitement and get people on board and i'll tell you what's going to happen too and this is the saddest part for me if i want to make a name for myself and i want to try to get in on this because i want to get in with and uh andreason what am I going to do? I'm going to throw some money at it so I can go to the same dinner with that they're going to be at and talk about how like, oh, I was just talking to the my boys over at, uh, you know, AH, it's great over there, you know? And it's like, that's what happens. It just starts to spin and spin and spin. But I don't know, man. 350 is a lot for an idea. I guess Who knows the they put out a token and then Andreessen just dumps the token on retail like they've been known to. I mean, it's sad. It's 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 sad for so many, so many reasons. And I I really mean this truly from the bottom of my heart. I don't wish ill will on anyone. I think Adam, hey man, you walked away with a billion dollars. Go use your money to start another company. My God, we're still taking it from, you know, private investors who who knows how they feel about it. I'd be curious there as well. And I think you're right, by the way, Amit, for what it's worth. I think it's one of those things where like, look, we have many, many billions of dollars. What's 350 million? It's worth the shot. Sure. Maybe, maybe that's the way of looking at it. But I said this in a tweet earlier today. I'm going to say it again. Um, I have no doubt that I could do the same thing. Yeah. Probably do it profitably, but I'm not going to be able to raise that kind of money. And you know, one of the, one of the one of the big challenges for every investor out there, whether it's in real estate or starting up uh, a technology communications company like yourself, it's getting attention at scale. And Adam has attention, and that's priceless. And that's probably the real value to Andreessen. Yeah, and I, my, my closing thoughts on this is if you're going to bet on the person to take you to the promised land uh, and you think Adam is this visionary guy and he can do it, 
you also have to bet on the person and the real person is not fictionalized. We know the real person did some pretty crappy things. And for that real person to just get another 350 million, like it was no problem. I mean, it's sad for an idea, for an idea, for an idea.